Hi Martin, John Roach. I'd like to hail in please. Uh, where will you be landing? Boy Hardy, Canadian fish dock. It's got a nice, it's an overall color. West Coast of British Columbia, Canada. Wild, rugged, natural, and home to the BC Groundfish Trawl Fishery. The BC Trawl Fishery has actively harvested various species of wild rockfish, cod, and sole along the BC coast for over 50 years. There are over 20 different species and 60 different stocks of groundfish harvested by vessels ranging from 35 to 180 feet in length. The fishery stretches from southern Vancouver Island to Dixon Entrance and out to the edge of the continental shelf. Vessels deliver fresh ground fish to processing plants in Prince Rupert, Port Hardy, Euclid, Port Alberni, Victoria, and Greater Vancouver. BC ground fish products are available worldwide with primary markets in the United States. Quality products and sustainable management have become the backbone of this fishery. Since 1994, the trawl industry has been guided by the Canadian Ground Fish Research and Conservation Society. The mandate of the CGRCS is to support the conservation of Canada's Pacific ground fish resource. It is made up of vessel owners, operators, crew members, processors and others with a vested interest in the effective management of the BC ground fish trawl fishery. So sustainability is the main objective. If uh, we don't have any fish, we can't fish. So naturally, we want to look after it. The trawl fishery is the largest producer of wild ground fish on the BC coast. The effective and sustainable harvest of Canadian ground fish from this highly specialized fishery generates valuable exports, jobs, and tax revenue year after year on a continuous basis. If it's going smooth, you ain't fishing. The Society works cooperatively with Department of Fisheries and Ocean scientists and managers on research activities and operational programs in support of a healthy and viable fishery. What species are we targeting? Greenies. Greenies? Yeah. Yellowtail? Yeah. Accountability for harvesting ground fish off the BC coast is a core principle in the ground fish trawl fishery. The Department of Fisheries and Oceans and the trawl industry pioneered the accountability process through the development of the 100% dockside monitoring and at sea observer programs. The dockside monitoring program was created in 1994 to accurately account for landed catch. The At Sea Observer Program was created in 1996 to monitor stock-specific species catches and releases and collect biological samples and scientific information that assists scientists in assessing the health of groundfish stocks. The commercial catch data, which includes both retained and at sea releases of trawl caught groundfish, provides an extremely accurate and timely accounting of total mortality by species and area. Information from both dockside and at-sea monitoring are also used for in-season management and enforcement of the fishery rules and regulations. An independent company, Archipelago Marine Research, is under contract to DFO and the trawl industry to provide dockside monitoring and at-sea observer services. DFO outlines program requirements and provides oversight and observer certification. 
We have a large number of staff, um, anywhere from 40 to 55, depending on the time of year, working as at-sea observers for Archipelago Marine Research. To be a fisheries observer, they complete three weeks of training, conducted primarily by Archipelago, but there's a large Department of Fisheries and Oceans Canada screening component as well to that certification process. All ground fish species that are caught must be accounted for. This means the catch is closely monitored at sea and dockside to accurately determine total mortality. And the vessel operator must have or obtain equivalent IVQ to cover the mortality of each species caught. If a vessel does not have IVQ to cover the catch, the vessel can no longer fish. Right here I'm sexing this fish. The at sea monitoring and the dockside monitoring allow us to have a full accounting of what is being removed out of the stock. Uh, dockside is the actual fish being landed at the dock. The at sea observer information gives us detailed information on the amount of effort, the type of fishing gear that's used, the catch and bycatch or non-directed catch that's associated with that fishing event, right down to the latitude, longitude and the time of capture. So that we have a full counting of all removals out of the stock. To ensure 100% accountability for all ground fish species caught and landed by the ground fish trawl fleet, there is a chain of custody requirement in place. Archipelago Morton speaking. John Roach off the Frosty. I'd like to request an observer. A vessel heading out to fish hails out to Archipelago Marine Research, stating departure date and location, and the anticipated return date and location. The skipper will also request an at-sea observer. This information is entered into the skipper's logbook, as well as the independent monitoring database. During the trip, the observer will monitor all aspects of the fishery, including obtaining catch estimates by species and area, and collecting biological samples used in assessing stock health and abundance. It's a really rich data set. I mean, we're getting roughly 20,000 observations a year of individual set-by-set -set information, and usually anywhere from 20 to 60 species being catalogued from each set. Every trip we get a couple of odorless samples to age the catch, and we get a, usually a fairly a broad range of size composition data. The quantity of data that's coming out of the observer program is something that you know, we could not in any way duplicate in a directed survey program. The cost would be uh, insurmountable. Yeah, this is uh, Martin Kennedy here, Arctic Ocean. I'd like to hail in, please. When a vessel is ready to deliver its catch, it hails in and requests a dockside monitor to meet the vessel and audit the sorting and weighing of the catch. 1206 Dover! The boat just finished, so what's left to do now is that they will clean out all the fish in the hopper and grade it to species. We'll get the weights on all those fish. I'll compare my tally to the plant's tally to make sure our numbers match. The plant will get the yellow copy of this, the vessel will get the pink copy of this. I'll complete the validation record, I'll check the hold on the boat, make sure there's no fish still on the boat. I'll get the skipper to sign off the paperwork, I'll give him the paperwork, I'll give the plants their paperwork, and that's pretty well it for the offload. All data, including fishing logs, validation uh, logs and biological and samples biological must be sent to Archipelago Marine Research where it is processed. So we get the observer's data from here once once it's gone through all of the verification process it gets exported into a database that looks something like this. From there we run a number of edit checks on it and we also use a mapping program. It uses the observer's positional information and plots it. You can zoom in and see each fishing event and where it's plotted. We merge it with dockside data and we're able to produce the quota status report. Which details each vessel's remaining stock specific quotas. This information is entered into the Fisheries and Oceans database system via the internet. From the time an individual lands the uh, fish, he can tell exactly within approximately 48 hours of how much fish he has left to go out and catch on his next trip. What it allows him to do is set up a business plan, 
And in addition to that, it allows us, as in terms of the department, to stay within our set uh, total allowable catches, or TAC, so that we're not over harvesting these stocks. They were actually living within the biological guidelines that uh, we established at the quotas for. So they are sustainable fisheries. In order to preserve the fishery, there's uh, TACs, total allowable catches, put out by the science department and the fisheries. And that's what we have to fish to, and that's what they have to manage to. So this John Roach, system, skipper of the fishing vessel Frosty, explains how he uses this data to manage his individual uh, vessel quota help during the fishery. Manage the system. With an experienced crew on board and ready to fish, the Frosty has set sail from the northern west coast of Vancouver Island, heading for the rich fishing grounds in Queen Charlotte Sound, an eight-hour northerly run. At 450 gross tons and just under 39 meters, this vessel is one of only 60 that fishes in the year-round Canadian West Coast ground fish trawl fishery. Rigged and ready, with all hands on deck, including a government certified fisheries observer who will oversee and document all fishing activity on the trip. Okay, Gord, well, good luck. Eight hours out of port, the Frosty arrives on the fishing ground. John knows the area well, and has a plan for how he will execute this trip. On this trip, the Frosty has prearranged the sale of its catch to a processor in Vancouver. That was a call from my partner. He had a call from our buyer in the States, in California, who we sell our whole fish to. John has a very specific list of species and poundage that he is targeting for eager buyers in California. The crew on the Frosty is a top-notch team with combined experience exceeding 80 years. To start the setting process, the crew will drop the end of the trawl net over the stern and the net starts to pay out behind the vessel. When the entire net is in the water, the wire ropes that attach it to the net reel are let out. These are known as sweeps and are used to transfer the net from the drum to the trawl doors. The doors are what keep the net spread apart. Once the sweeps are attached to the doors, the doors are lowered using wire ropes known as warps. The warps are stored on trawl winches that contain several hundred feet of warp. This first set is targeting greenies and canaries. John wants no more than 12,000 pounds this set. It has a look to it on the sounder and, and with this, this ES60 sounder, it, it gives me the size of the fish. I always said years ago when I started fishing that the sounder is your best friend out here shows you the fish you're trying to catch. Using state-of-the-art fishing gear, high-tech electronics, and drawing on John's years of fishing experience, the Frosty will set its net in select locations, sometimes for only a few minutes, to capture the specific species and amounts needed. Using his GPS-enabled plotter and sensors in the trawl net, John is going to set over an area that he last fished about eight months ago. The depth here is 150 fathoms deep. John will let out enough warp to keep the net just off bottom. The net is designed with a head rope that is equipped with floats that keep the front of the net raised and the mouth of the net open. The foot rope at the bottom of the net is equipped with rollers. This helps the net roll along the ocean floor whenever it touches the bottom. Using state-of-the-art net sensors and flow meters, the spread of the doors and the symmetry of the net are continuously checked. The amount of fish entering the net is closely monitored so that at any point in time, John can retrieve the net quickly with the optimal quantity and quality of fish. Last tow that turned red, that meant that I had a good tow of fish so we hauled right away. This here is what we call trawl light and that's the, that's the opening of your net in there. John orders the retrieval of the net. The crew hauls in the warps. The net is then transferred back to the net reel and the net is drummed aboard. While the crew stores the catch, the observer keeps a constant eye on what is on deck. 
The observer's job is to make sure that there is an accurate account of all fish caught. That toe there we had is a mixture of greenies and canaries, which we have quota in this area, both of those. And that was a perfect sized toe, it's about 12 or 13,000, 14 minutes. It's perfect. The fish are in really good shape. Most of them are still kicking. And they'll be beautiful fish when they go to market. Selective fishing is just one of the responsible measures that the trawl industry has used as a tool to ensure sustainability of Canada's West Coast ground fish. We have lots of tools here. We have two plotters, they're tools. The sounders, all this stuff is tools that, of the trade. That system there is just one of our tools that we use to help us manage our quota to a sustainable fishery. The BC trawl industry selectively targets more than 20 different species of ground fish and makes contact with less than 10% of the sea floor off the west coast of Canada. Large portions of the marine area are closed to fishing to protect spawning stocks, juvenile fish, or important fish habitat. There are over 163 rockfish conservation area closures on the west coast to protect productive rockfish habitat. In addition, there are closures covering nearly 1,800 square kilometers in Queen Charlotte Sound, Hecate Strait, and Dixon Entrance to protect valuable sponge reef habitat. There are also large in-season fishery closures for eight months of the year in the Central Coast to protect rockfish and for four months of the year in the Hecate Strait to protect spawning codfish. John knows that now that he has started fishing, he will have 48 hours to get his catch and be back in port to offload. His buyer has become accustomed to the highest quality fish being caught, processed and on the dinner table within no more than four days of harvest, and in some cases, just over a day. You've got to land tomorrow afternoon or something and you need a truckload of fish and it's still stressful, but that's fishing. John has been fishing for just over 38 hours and there is approximately 50,000 pounds on board. He is right on track with his timing and catch estimates. I believe we got a little bit more room on our quota to make another tow and the fish are there and we are here so we'll try one more for the day. The crew is hauling in the last set and preparing to transit back to port and offload the valuable catch. We're targeting both the round market and the uh, uh, fillet market. For round market, it's very important to have good overall appearance. Close to a tan almost. We're trying to get the fish as perfect as possible. Quality is everything. For years we got away with not bringing in the best quality fish we could have and getting paid for it. Those days are gone. Everywhere else in the world, they quality is the word. If we want to be competitive with world markets, we have to bring in a good quality product that the people want. From the boat end of it, we're trying to instill more of an emphasis on quality, less of an emphasis on quantity. Our regular draggers have shorter trips, uh, land more often. We don't land in Vancouver as often because it's further away from the fishing grounds, so we have them land on the island, which gets the product.